Hey guys, it's Micah and today I'll be teaching you about the ping pong delay in Ableton Live. Now the ping pong delay effect uses a single taped delay line to create a delay that jumps from your left to your right output. Now the delay is preceded by a low pass and a high pass filter that can be controlled by clicking on this little yellow circle and moving it along or you can change the values in this rectangle either by clicking and dragging your mouse or manually inputting a value with your keyboard. Just note that this filter impacts the delay only, it doesn't filter the original sample. So I hope you can hear there that the delay has a significant high pass filter on it but the actual sample is still full. That's the original sample. All right, under the filter, you've got your delay. These little buttons refer to 16th notes. So four 16th notes and five 16th notes and so forth. And you can only activate these if you're in sync mode, but you can also change to time mode, in which case you can set your delay with respect to milliseconds over here. Now you've got this F switch over here, which is your freeze switch and enabling freeze causes the delay to endlessly cycle the audio, which is currently in the buffer. No new audio will be processed. So if you've got a drum loop, let's take freeze off and run it through the ping pong delay. And then I will hit freeze and you'll hear the result. It's kind of frozen there. And if I want it to keep going, you just deactivate freeze. Now, when you're in sync mode, then this rectangle on the right becomes your beat offset percentage. And you can adjust the slider and it'll either shorten or extend the delay time by a very small amount. This can be used to produce a subtle offset or a kind of swing delay. As opposed to zero. You will also find your beat offset percentage in your grain delay audio effect. And if you want to learn about the grain delay, you can check out this video over here. And then at the bottom, we have feedback and dry wet. Feedback just determines the amount of signal that comes out of the ping pong delay that you want fed back into the ping pong delay for reprocessing. The more feedback you have, the more murky, I guess, the resulting sound will be as the signals and the tails all kind of blend into one. Also, just be wary of having too much feedback. And your dry wet control adjusts the balance between your processed, your wet signal, and your dry signal. Now, there are just two things I want to note. If you are busy using your ping pong delay and in the middle of something, you're changing your delay time, this is going to cause an interesting little glitch, I suppose, in your audio. So you can hear it's kind of going wee. Now you can change Ableton's behavior when you change your delay samples. And to do that, you right click on the title bar to get your context menu. And you've got three options, repitch, fade, and jump. Repitch causes a pitch variation when you change the delay time. It's really similar to the behavior of old hardware delay units. If you have fade enabled, then Ableton will create a cross fade between the old and the new delay times. This sounds similar to time stretching if the delay time is gradually changed. Fade mode is also the default option. It doesn't sound nearly as drastic as repitch. And then at the bottom you've got jump, and jump immediately jumps to the new delay time. Now this will cause audible clicks if the delay time is changed while the delays are still sounding. Jump used to be the default behavior in Ableton Live 8, so if you're loading an old project, then jump will be your default instead of fade. a tiny little click. I don't know if you can hear that. Anyway, that's the ping pong delay. I hope you learned something new and I hope that you apply this at home. I'll be teaching through all the audio effects. So if you're interested in that, please hit subscribe and let me know if you learned anything new in this video. I will see you soon in the next one.